punks are misunderstood. Most people, when they think of punks, they think of violent freaks rolling around in glass, beating each other up. When they think about punk, they think of the power, I think of the energy, I think of the possibilities for change. That's what punk's all about, change. It's about music by kids, for kids, reflecting the frustrations and the problems that kids face every day. The music most of us grew up with in the 70s was music by older people, singing about partying and cruising, things that we just couldn't relate to. That's not what we were feeling in our lives. And the media, they've always exploited the scene. They've always sensationalized the negative aspects, the violence. They never talked about the positive things. So that's why we started the Better Youth Organization, because we felt that there was positive things and that they needed to be heard and we were sick and tired of having this negative image. We want to put out a positive image. So this summer we're going to go on tour across the country and we're going to go and we're going to see the kids all over. We want to tell them that they can do these sort of things. They got to do it on their own because no one's going to help them. You got to be an individual. You got to get off your ass. You got to be heard. If you got ideas, you got to say them. You got to let, let yourself be heard. Well, the Youth Brigade's a band with myself and my two brothers. Now, the Better Youth Organization is something completely distinct and apart from that. It is an organization that puts out records, puts on shows, and generally supports the scene and tries to help things go along in a positive manner. And last year we did a show, probably the biggest show in, in punk show in LA history. There's almost 3,000 kids there. And with a little bit of money we made off that, we bought a bus. And now we're going to try and do our biggest project. We're going to take the bus, we're going to go out on tour around the country, and we're going to take a band called Social Distortion, who we really like and we think we'll get along well with. Social Distortion's been together about three years, and this will be our first tour, first thing we've done on our own. As far as I know, we're going on this tour, and it's mapped out, I guess, but you know, I don't really know the details if we're going to be sleeping in the bus, or we got motels to stay at, or what. Well, the main fear is the mental stress that's going to be happening on this tour, man. There's going to be so many head games in that bus and so many people fighting over the last brew. Well, the BYO, basically what they've guaranteed, social distortion. During that time that we travel, we will get $10 a day for living, living expenses, which is really cheap. But this is like the first thing for them. It's the first thing for us. And we're all just doing it for the fun of it. We're all just going to have fun. About 31 cities, about 30, 31 cities plus you got six nights in Calgary, so we're talking like 30, 30, between 30 and 35 shows. So it'll be 35 about. 35 days or something? Well, it'll be one, two, three, four, it'll be a little over five weeks. We'll be back at the end of September. Well, the purpose of this tour is not for us to go out and become big rock stars and make a lot of money, because we know that's not going to happen. We're just hoping to break even. We're not some big act who's got a record company behind us doing everything for us. We're doing this all on our own, independently. And we're trying to prove to people that punks aren't a bunch of mindless morons who go around beating each other up, slashing each other like they say. That they can do things on their own, they can do things independently because they believe in it and they're really sincere about it. Now whether the tour is going to work or not, we're just going to have to wait and see. <laughs>
My name is Marlon Whitfield. I'm 20 years old and I'm part of the road crew. Louis, 21. I'm just I'm doing everything, driving, working on the bus. Dennis, 16. I play guitar. Okay. My name is Adam. I'm from the youth brigade. I'm 17. Prince and Michael Kitteridge, 19. Uh, road crew, learning a new profession. My name is Derek O'Brien. I'm 19 years old. I come from Orange County, California and I play drama. Dennis, I'm 38. Um, I'm Brian, I'm 19, I play bass in the social distortion. I'm Mark Stern, I'm 21 years old, I play drums in the youth brigade. Michael, I started social distortion about summer of 78. I'm Dennis, I play guitar in social distortion. I'm old. Well, people call me Monk. My name is really Mark. Uh, I basically, I'm supposed to be the Make sure everything is coordinated and it goes well with the van or the bus. We're going to we're going to all the big cities like New York and Washington and that, but we're also doing a lot of smaller places like Portland, Oregon, and Seattle, and then up in Canada we're doing Calgary and Edmonton and Saskatoon and Winnipeg, which are places that people bands haven't ever really played before. So I think the bus should hold out. It's only got. 90,000 miles on it. <laughs> no, well, we got Monk, and he's a mechanic. He's pretty good. He's been doing a lot of work on the bus, so I, I guess we shouldn't, you know, if we run into any problems, I think we should be able to handle it. So long as we have enough money to fix things and nothing really major happens, I think we'll make everything. This is all the supplies right here. I do this every day. It's just not not only just for shows, but I'm just before you go outside into the world, just it's just my look. A lot of people laugh. But I, to me, it doesn't. There's nothing funny about it. To me, it, fashion is. To me, it's very fashionable. And it's a look that I've wanted for a long time. Most guys don't know how to wear makeup, anyways. You know, guys naturally think you're gay because you have eyeliner, mascara, maybe a little nail polish on. I just kind of like that sympathetic look when I'm on stage. It just. It just looks more natural too, but it kind of like, it looks as though, you, you know, you've been crying or something, kind of makes it have a sympathetic view towards you. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to tonight, for tonight, because this is the uh, first night of this game, it's cool, right? It's a game of sound, or what it's going to be like. they fucking think or whatever they call it they put it on for the sake of that and not to make green anytime Steve Pritchard or any of these other assholes put on a show they do it for the green they do it to make money and that's bullshit the bands deserve the money 
but half of it is the band's fault. The cramps come through here and they play a bar, 21 and over. They ultimately eliminate three quarters of their audience by playing a 21 and a bar. What the hell are they gonna play a bar for? Who can go see them? Yeah, their fans can't fucking go see them. Really? It's bullshit. The bands have got to accept responsibility. That's a good thing about this show, is the bands are out here, they're playing an underage show for nothing, man. Three bucks a head, it's nothing. The last Four time years. we played here, we got $250, and this time we got 40 God, we did a really good show. Everybody loved hey, it. This out the front, please. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, I think it was a total car. success, except for the fact bad. that the son of a bitch Thank ripped you. us off. They ripped us off at first. Then we had to hassle him for more money just so we could pay the PDs. Sean, this is what he gave us. Right Rolls of pennies. <laughs> 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 fucking cheap <laughs> old <laughs> I mean, if I was a normal, a normal person working nine to five, I'd get kind of pissed off if I saw someone with blue hair. I mean, because you got to figure that that person, you know, leaves a pretty free and carefree life. Because you know, you can't go to work with blue hair; it just doesn't work that way. So they, they get kind of pissed off because I can go and do what I damn well please, and they have to go to work every day. Which is, I think it's a big part of why everyone d dislikes punks so much. Because punks pretty much do as they please, you know? You define yourself in society to a large degree by how you look. And if I wear, you know, wore top siders and polo shirts and something like that, I would define myself as the nice middle class kid who's ready to take up where my parents left off. And the fact is that I don't look like that means that I'm not willing to do that. And my look is a direct re reflection of my attitude. I can no more change my look than I could change my attitude. I, I would feel unclean virtually going around looking like a prep. The reason why I look the way I do is because I don't like the quote unquote Brooke Shields look. I don't like the everyday all American girl. Okay, because I'm not. Well, when I was little, you know, most people like they grow up and they, when they're little, they when they, they say, "When I grow up, I want to be a doctor or whatever." I always wanted to be a clown, so that might have something to do with why I look so strange. If I dress normal, you know, like preppy or whatever, I could be walking down the street and I could still get pulled over for just being black in like the wrong neighborhood, which has happened to me before. And being a punk makes like. You know, I've been placed like walking around with, with blue hair or something, and I had some guy say to me like, "Isn't it bad enough you're black that you know you have to go have blue hair?" And he was gonna duke me, so it doesn't make a difference, like really, what I did, because if I was if I was you know just black and normal, I'd still get fucked with, so I might as well do what I want to do, and just take my chances. It's part of being a black person in this country to be fucked with, and it's part of being a punk too to get fucked with people dislike you. So just deal with it because that's what I like to do. <laughs> Well approved. Canucks, 
Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks, Canucks
some type of chorus that steps up, like. That's about as far as I got. Any lyric ideas so far? No, I like to write. I don't know, I've been thinking about a lot of things on the tour. You know, I've got a lot of inspiration for writing some new songs. I thought of one title, something called um, Another State of Mind. Get another state in another state of mind. Oh, that was kind of witty. I'm playing a band, I'm traveling, I'm making money. I don't, I'm paying enough, making enough money to, to live. So, <laughs> that's what I'm doing, I'm living. And I'm living my lifestyle, yep. Give me your average day. Average day? Uh, sleep in. <laughs> Uh, depends on what time I wake up. Watch um, Twilight Zone or something. Uh, eat. I watch General Hospital in Rockford. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, uh, <laughs> let me see. I used to watch. Then I'd watch like uh, <laughs> uh, Mary Tyler Moore and Bob Newhart. I eat again. <laughs> And uh, then I'd watch on. Uh, <laughs> I'd watch on um, SWAT, and then Kung Fu, and then go out, <laughs> drink with my friends, go to a show or something. Nightlife. structure in the, the, the family system or whatever. There's no family system to destroy because it's, it, was, it was already broken down. It's been falling apart for about the last 20 years. The, uh, you know, sitting down at dinner and talking about things and going to church on Sunday and playing ball in the park with the kids and everything like that. 
that stuff's not happening anymore. The, there's, we're just living in too fast of a society. It's like nobody has, a lot of people don't have time to do that. They're so preoccupied with other things. For a while, my mom used to like, she used to throw me out of the house every two months. I, she'd tear down all my flyers off the walls and throw my posters away and stuff. And all the pictures of my friends, I used to have them on a bulletin board. And she'd just tear it all down and rip them up. So now I just, I just don't like flaunt it in her face. You know, it's like she accepts it. She doesn't like it. Well, my parents just think I'm weird. And well, my dad likes my hair. My ultimate goal in life isn't to be the nice capitalist tool, which, you know, I'll get paid good money and get a nice suburban home and have 2.2 kids and have a nice, have two cars and a nice dog and everything like that. That's not my ideal. I'm not willing to sacrifice my life to do that. And the fact that I won't. Um, is really, I think, threatening to a lot of parents. It's threatening. I'm sure it's threatening to my parents in a way. My parents actually are more open-minded than some, so I can say I can say that to a degree to them, and they don't absolutely freak out. But they still have a hard time recognizing it. And the fact is, to an in increasing number of kids, punks and non-punks, the all-American dream is not is not a viable um, solution. I want my son. Oh, oh. Is that you? one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 tell me about, is this Marcel? Yeah. yeah. Tell, tell me about Marcel. Me? Okay, two years ago, two years ago, I used to see him at the club, and I used to think he was really cute, you know? And he, like he was walking, he was all nice, and once he got hit by a car, and then, since then, he almost died, and he went into coma and all this, and then all his friends came to see him, and when his, when his friend came to see him, uh, he started to talk, and then he started to talk, and then he started to move, and soon he's gonna walk. Because, like, he's got willpower. He wants to walk again. He almost died, he was in coma, he couldn't even speak. And now look at him. He can move his hand, he can talk, he can go nuts and all this. He can't even have a hard dome. Is that true, Marcel? That's yeah. true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I used to go and beg and snatch purses and beat up faggots with some friends of mine to get some money to go eat or get stone, you know? And uh, I like it better. I wouldn't like to be rich because I'm happy on the street, because on the street I am myself. When I wanted a place to stay, I go in a, in a club where stupid cunts go there and I go see a harmless people, like go see for harmless people and then I say to them, Oh, I have no money, nothing to eat and stuff like this. And then they feel sorry for me and then they make me eat. And then after a week, they make me eat and they give me a place to stay and then they want to screw and then I tell them to fuck off. And then I go for somebody else, always like this, always find my way. I and am scared of people because people are scared of me because they think I'm gonna beat them up. I'm not gonna beat them up. What do your parents think of all this? Oh my, they just don't like me anymore. Because I used to be another person years ago. I used to be the nicest person you ever met. I used to be good at school and all that stupid stuff, but I found out by myself that it was not right for me, that even if I was good enough for school and all this, I did enough to go and show up good notes and all this. What made you change? It's just that I was tired of doing what people wanted me to do. I just wanted to do something I could figure out myself. I do not want to harm nobody. I want them to live in peace and to make me live in peace. I am gonna die 
in that ball in three years. So I want everybody to come and see me at the funeral. You're gonna die in two years? Yeah, in two years. Why? Because life is not amusement for me. I do not like to live in this kind of life. Well, this is kind of like the worst it's been getting on the tour. I mean, the last couple of days we've been breaking down and it's like starting to get really bad in this in, in Montreal. I mean, the weather's pretty bad. We've been running out of money. We've been having the bus has been breaking down. We've been having to spend money fixing up the bus and things are getting kind of fucked. Everyone's starting to complain and, and grumble about not getting enough money. We haven't been getting paid at all the gigs. Like tonight, we haven't been getting, didn't get paid all our money. And then, I don't know, it's just, seems like things are just kind of starting to fall apart. And then to top it all off, we go to this, these guys who put the show on, we said we were hungry, we wanted to go get something to eat, so they take us to this taxi joint that says open. It's like three in the morning, we go in there, and this, this lady, this French lady, this old, ugly lady, wouldn't serve us, she wouldn't even speak to us in English, and we knew she could speak English, we knew she understood what, she, what we were saying, and then she calls the cops on us, and the cops come and kick us out. We didn't do anything, all we wanted to do was buy some food, they wouldn't even let us eat, it was totally ridiculous. Choice? Yeah. Well, do we have a choice? Get her, get her, she looks sleepy. She's smiling on the camera and the whole world is going to see this. She's crazy. She's, I guess she's afraid of us. She thinks we're, we're going to come in there to fuck with her or something. That's just the way people, it's a, it's a normal reaction. It's a lot of straight people who have never seen punks before. They just think you're there to fuck with them or to intimidate them or something, you know. And, a bunch of kids come in, they're kind of noisy and stuff, maybe she could get scared, but we, all we wanted was to eat something. She wouldn't even give us a cup of coffee or, or anything like that. It was totally ridiculous. Come on, boys. Whoa! I've got hives on my house. Well, he's a witch. The money situation is starting to get pretty down, and people are starting to get on each other's nerves. This money makes a big difference, I guess, which is a pretty sick thing to think about, but unfortunately it's true. When you're hungry and you don't have any money, the best things don't look as great as they did before. What about like, unity? What about unity? If you're hungry, nobody's unified. <laughs> you know, if you got nothing to eat, there's nothing to be uni unified about. You can't, can't be fed on unity.
don't know, I just, the spurt of energy that you get, just because the energy of the music just builds and builds, you just feel like, you know, going balls out, you know? And that's why I did it. Some people call it slamming, and some people call it pogoing, and some call it the skank. But uh, I just like call it dancing, because that's normally what you're doing. Like this one, I just call this more or less a slam. It's just keep going in a circle, with, 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 keep moving your arms and stuff, and just bouncing off people, pushing them away. Then you'll see people stepping up through the crowd like this, pushing people off them as they bounce into them. And then also, there's also people, you'll see them, they'll be doing the pogo. They're usually pretty close to the stage. And as you keep moving around in a circle like this, because that's the way the pit moves is in a circle, people are jumping off stage, you push them away, and just try not to get out of that circle, because if you do, you get out of the beat. And that's where the energy's at, is in the beat. Just keeps going like this. Just keep moving around. And it doesn't matter. If you fall down or not, because your buddy's going to be there to pick you up, or someone's going to pick you up. Get everything? Well, the slam dance is just a real aggressive type of dance it's almost like you know something you would see in a football game but the people that are doing it they're all basically friends they know each other so nobody really very seldom gets hurt it looks very violent very rough but you know everybody just bounces off of each other rolls around they just have a good time you can get hurt you can if you're if you're a girl so from a girl's point of view I don't think that slamming is advisable or I don't even think it's I think it's pretty stupid but it does it's a good thing it's a good way to get your aggressions out if you're a guy because you can go out there and guys can usually handle it I used to slam dance <laughs> I used to be the only girl out there slam dancing and uh, <laughs> I got my leg broken America is built around the whole idea of the John Wayne ethic of us versus them, let's beat the shit out of the other guy before he beats the shit out of you. And that's, and really when you look at it, that the people that are criticizing the punks for slamming are these, are these macho Americans, fat, overage, you know, middle-aged Americans sitting in their armchairs watching other people beat the shit out of each other on TV every Sunday afternoon. But when it comes down to some people all at once having a good time with their friends, just um, where, where there's no conversation Competition. It's just everyone having a good time. They call it random chaos or very violent when that's not what it is at all. Bonsai! Okay, well, we come out here on weekends and practice stage dives. and Because sometimes if you're at a gig, you can get hurt if the, cl if the crowd splits or, you know, you try mostly try to land on your feet or toward your feet or your butt so you don't really crack your head open when you hit the ground. When there's no gigs happening, we just go here and just let out our aggression because of school and parents and everyone. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just something to do. If you fall or when you're slamming, if you fall down, everyone stops and they help you. They pick you up, you know, they make sure everything's okay. And if you're hurt, you know, they're going to help you out. Well, sometimes you try to land, like, not feet first in the people, because I've landed feet first in somebody's head and got beat up for it, and it wasn't too much fun. So, you know, you just practice out here and try to land sort of like at an angle where they can at least slow you down before you hit the ground or, or catch you or whatever, you know, just so you don't get hurt and don't hurt other people. Some kids say that when they're out dancing at a punk show that it's not violent, but that's really a joke because it is violent. The whole nature of the dance is violent. The way kids swinging around, it just looks like they're beating each other up. The thing is, is it's not a malicious violence. It's not really, it's not negative. They're not out there to hurt each other. They're out there getting their aggressions out. I mean, they got a lot of pent up angers and hates and frustrations and they're like a lot of things about the world that piss them off and it's just a release, an energy release.
screw this plug right here. That we'll, one? Yeah, right there. And we'll fill the gearing box to it so we don't get the jaw wobbles again. No more jaw then, wobbles. It's like not a car. It's not in tune. Thank you. Thank you. And then just, okay, this is how the chorus community goes. Yeah. From A. So remember that change? G. I was following it. Okay. Then we start it. catching the bus out. I mean, the bus broke, you know, the, the tour bus broke down here, and this is, we, I'm not going to be wandering the streets of Detroit just for, I've, I've lived here before. I mean, it's dangerous. I'm not into it. We're like, we're cut now. So that's it. What did the other guys think? Oh, they're bummed. I mean, a lot of them, I think, like, Brent wants to go too, but the band's like holding him back. He's got like the loyalty to the band thing, but everybody's pretty much pissed off and wants to go home. I think they're just like holding on to something that's like gonna fuck up pretty soon anyway. I don't feel guilty for leaving because everybody wants to leave. Everybody's tired of it. I mean, 11 guys in a bus is just like, it's cabin fever. Nobody's like, was prepared for that, dealing with everybody else's personality and stuff. And I just happen to have like a way to get home. say that punks are rebels without a cause, but that's not true. I mean, we have plenty of things to fight for. I mean, kids in the 60s, they, they made people aware of the problems, and they had a war to fight against. We don't have a war, but those problems are still around. They didn't find any solutions for them. I mean, they still exist. It's hard these days for anyone, for kids to have anything to believe in. I mean, the traditional things we were brought up with, the government, um, the family system, the American dream, the whole religion thing that's so important to our society, they just don't work anymore. It's all falling down around us. It, we can see it every day. It's just nothing you can believe in. Uh, we live in a government right now or under an administration that's trying to regress, go back to a golden age that doesn't exist. And they, they sincerely believe we could have a nuclear war. And that's, that's a really scary thing to grow up thinking that these people are any day are just going to blow us all up. And the whole family system that we were brought up on, uh, the American dream that our parents realized of going to school and getting a good job and getting married, and that would make you happy. But that didn't make them happy. Most of our parents are getting divorced. Most of the punks come from broken homes. And they look at their parents and they say, well, if that's the way they turn out, I don't want to turn out like that. I mean, that's, it's not going to make us happy if it didn't make them happy. And, and the religious values that we were brought up in, I mean, we live in what people term a sinful society these days. Those religious values that we were brought up in, they just don't exist. Most of us are look at ourselves as individuals and um, as far as following some sort of dogmatic religious values or code, we, we just won't do that anymore. How many times has someone come to you and said, friend, what you're doing to yourself is wrong. The way you're living is not right. You need to turn around. Has anyone ever said that to you? And what was your reaction? 
Did you just go ahead right on and do whatever you want to do? Or did you listen when people tried to tell you that you're making a mistake? You know the devil will get you to go to any extreme. The devil loves extremes. He'd like for you to be somewhere cutting yourself, deforming yourself, and abusing your body somehow, some way. That's one of the devil's tricks today. What we're trying to achieve here is we've opened our house up to, to uh, anyone that's, that wants to change, that wants to find Christ, that, that wants to get off the streets, that wants to uh, definitely get an improvement in their lives, get their lives on the right track. We allow kids to stay here, we give them food, uh, we do as much as we can. Every, everyone that, that comes here has been from a divorced family. That has been the major problem that we've seen is the family has fallen apart on these kids. They come here and, and, and they have nothing. They have no place to live, no money, no food. You know, we can't turn them out. Back to the basic question, if you're a punk rocker, yes, you can get saved. But I, I think very definitely after you are truly born again, you'll, you'll hear that still small voice begin to talk to you about particular things in your life that would be displeasing to God. But as far as the, the punk rock music, I'm not really that familiar with it. I, my own opinion would be that it does not bring God much glory. We're, we were both part of the punk scene. We both found Jesus Christ who changed our lives drastically where you had a monster and an alcoholic or both of the same. Yes. <laughs> and we both, he, he really helped us. He's, he's played a major part in both of our lives. Parents are, are too busy uh, seeking their own pleasure and not, and not really, really, really we're, we're in the child in the ways of the world. When you don't rear a child in the ways of the Lord, he's going to want it. He's, he's, he's going to try and find the truth. One of the, I think, the presets of punk is that is that you don't accept the is that you don't accept morality just f as a code of rules for no reason without thinking about it. Is that morals and, and institutions stuff like that should be questioned just like everything else should be, and that organized religion isn't very doesn't go along with that. Accepting what some preacher says just because he's a preacher and, and claims he's in the, does something in the name of God is really stupid. And it's, and people it's the preachers and the Reagans and people like that who end up get, killing millions of people in the name of, of us versus them or in the name of some religion or their country or their flag or whatever. And that punks, I, I can't imagine a punk accepting what Jerry Falwell says or some other um, asshole preacher. We can say bad things about the church and everything like that, but it's just another uh, crutch. Like kids, some kids drink, some kids take pills, some kids go to church. <laughs> Do anything. I was, like I didn't even fucking hear time. nothing, man. I was sitting down. right That's there. I was right now. behind you, man. How the fuck did that happen? Oh, wow. Things are tough all over. 
Fuck you, then you sleep Shit. outside, dick. Yeah. We're at Constitution and 12th, right around the corner from the Washington Monument. Yeah. yeah. This is a one big ugly yellow bus. <laughs> I think we better buy ourselves a brand new Mack truck. 18 wheels. What? Fucking 18 wheeler rolling down the highway, fucking video games and. It's a good thing we're a mobile society. And they already went out and bought hamburger meat rolls. They got beer from the basement, a couple cases. So you, me, and Brent are gonna style. Uh, I'll shine the rest of the rats in the sinking ship. Well, I'm not shining them. I got them a place to stay at least. Gonna come pick us up. <laughs> like, as, bring the station wagon. Well, I'll just bring a car for three. Everybody to their own life. When the times get hard, the fucking people get moving.